In this video, we're going to do a quick review of what functions are all about. We're going to talk about what a function is and see some examples of functions. And we're also going to talk about something called function notation. So let's get started. What is a function in mathematics? Well, it's a type of relationship. It's a very specific and special type of relationship between two things, which we usually call variables. Uh, we can think of it, and we often think of it, as a rule, a specific rule. That is, a function in mathematics is a rule that gives a single output for every valid input. So we're talking about a rule that involves inputs and outputs. And if we provide this rule with a valid input, we only get one output. Now in math, we often talk about our input and our output as being uh, the variables x and y. x is our input and y is our output. And once again, we, we sometimes refer to these as the independent variable x and the dependent variable y. I'm sure you've heard that several times. So if we talk about it in that sense, uh, we have that a function is a relationship or a relation in which for every value of x, there is only one corresponding value of y. So let's take a look at some examples uh, to see what this really means. We're gonna play a game called function or not. So we're gonna see our first example and we have to decide whether or not we have a function here. Notice we have a list of points uh, and each of these points has an X value and a corresponding Y value. And by the way, whenever we list uh, points or pretty much whenever we list anything in math, we always use these squiggly brackets or these braces on the ends to show that we're listing a set of things. So let's take a look at this example. Notice that for an X value of one, we only have one corresponding Y value and that is one. There are no other points here that have an X value of one. So an X value of one only goes with a Y value of one. Similarly, an X value of two only corresponds to a Y value of four. An input or an X value of three only corresponds to a uh, Y value or an output of nine. And an X value of four only corresponds to an X value of 16. So because every X value here only corresponds to a single uh, Y value, then we have a function. So this is indeed a function. Let's take a look at another example. Now with this example here, something happens that did not happen in our first example. And I'll draw your attention to this first point here and this last point here. Notice that both of them have an X value of two. But in the first point, we have a corresponding Y value of one. And in the last point, the corresponding Y value is four. That is to say an input or an X value of two corresponds to two different output values or two different Y values, which breaks our rule for being a function. So this is not a function. One more here. Uh, notice we have an X value of negative seven corresponds only to a Y value of one. There are no other X values of negative seven here. Negative three only goes with five, four only goes with five, and six only goes with one. So this is indeed a function. Now don't let it throw you off that we have, for example, a Y value of one here and also a Y value of one here. That is okay. What matters is that negative seven only goes with one for the Y value. We don't have negative seven corresponding to another, a different Y value, okay? Uh, six, this X value here only corresponds to a Y value of one. It does not correspond to any other Y values. It's okay that two different X values uh, correspond to the same Y value. That's not a problem. And the same thing happens with negative three, five, and four, five. Negative three only corresponds to a Y value of five. Four also happens to correspond to a Y value of five, but what's important is that it's the only Y value that goes with four, and it's the only Y value that goes with negative three. So we have a function. And we can see uh, this sort of thing in different ways. So here's a table of values. We have our input or our X values in the left side here, our output or our Y values in the right side. Do we have a function here? Uh, no, actually we do not. Because if we had a function, every value of X would correspond to only a single value of Y. And we can see that our problem value for X here is one. It corresponds to two different y values. That is a y value of five and a y value of seven. So right away there, we know we do not have a function. What about this one here? Well, if we take a look at our x values here, notice that uh, we don't have any repeated x values. So we really, really don't have to worry about this breaking the rule for being a function. Negative two is only going to go with whatever's over here. Negative one is only going to go with five and so on. So every single x value corresponds to only one y value. So this is a function. And one more here. This one sometimes throws people off because they look in the left-hand column, the input or the X values here, and they see two fours and they immediately conclude this is not a function. We have 
you know, this x value happening twice. But it turns out it is a function because if we look in the right side here, uh, notice that the x value of four in both cases corresponds to a y value that is the same. It just happens to be four. Uh, but the point is that this four and this four here are the same number. So since four for the x value only corresponds to a y value of four, um, that's not a problem. We, we have a function. And the same thing with, with five here, uh, five for x, only corresponds to a y value of four. I know we have a five here for x, but the corresponding y value is also four. So they're the same here. So we do have uh, a function. Okay, we don't have five corresponding to two different y values. We don't have four uh, being matched up with two different y values. All right. What about uh, if we see something in a graphical representation? Well, we know that we have our x-axis here and our y-axis here. If we pick any x value, notice there's only one y value that goes with it. So an x value of one only goes with a y value of five. Uh, for example, an x value of four only goes with a y value of eight. And that also happens for two and three for x. There's only one corresponding y value. So we have a function. Ah, but this one is not a function, okay? And the problem x value here is four. Right? If we look at four, notice that four corresponds to two different y values, eight, but also nine, two different y values. So we do not have a function here. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, this one here, we have a continuous graph instead of just a bunch of points, uh, but we can kind of, you know, take the same approach. If we took any and every x value, is there only one corresponding y value? And it turns out there is. For example, if we take an x value of three, the only y value that goes with that is three, okay? If we take a y value, or sorry, an x value of negative two, the only y value that goes with that is two, okay? Don't let it throw you off that negative two gives us a y value of two, and an x value of two also gives us a y value of two. That's okay. What's important is each of those x values only corresponds to a single y value. All right, so that is a function. And this one here, well, this one is not a function, okay? We can see that, for example, and all we really need is one example to show that it's not a function. If we take an x value of three, there are two corresponding y values, a y value of three and a y value of negative three. And that happens for uh, you know a bunch of x values. I just chose three to, to show the example. But because we have even just one single x value corresponding to two different y values, this is not a function. Okay, moving on here. Functions and graphs. So when we look at a graph, how could we tell uh, whether or not it represents a function? And we just did that, right? Notice back here, that's what we were doing, right? Uh, and we were really just looking at some x values and determining whether or not there was more than one corresponding y value. If there is, it's not a function. If there's not more than one corresponding uh, y value for all of the x values, then it's a function. Now, there's something called the vertical line test, uh, which is kind of just uh, really doing the same thing. Uh, it's just a different way to kind of talk about it. So the graph represents a function if for every value of x, there's only one corresponding value of y. We know that that's what a function is. Um, so the vertical line test is, is this. If any vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph, then the relation is not a function, okay? Uh, and that's really just saying, you know, if you can find an x value uh, and it corresponds to more than one y value, that is if you draw a vertical line at that x value and you hit the graph in more than one spot, you do not have a function. So let's see an example of that. Here is, well, it's a parabola. Is this a function? It is a function, yes. Uh, the reason for any x value that we have here, there's only one corresponding y value. So for an x value of two, the only corresponding y value is negative four, okay? In other words, if we draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph, anywhere that we choose, it'll only hit the graph at a single point, okay? And all that's really saying is that that particular x value only corresponds to the one y value, okay? And it's called the vertical line test. And that's just a quick way of kind of explaining um, what, we're, what we're looking at when we try to determine whether or not a graph represents a function. All right, what about something like this though? This is like a sideways opening parabola. Is this a function? Uh, no, it is definitely not a function. Um, and the reason is because we can pick one of many, many, many x values, perhaps this one right here. 
And if we draw a vertical line through through this x value, continue it upward and downward, notice it hits the graph in two different spots. And what does that mean? It means that for that x value, there are two corresponding y values, that one and that one. So right away, it can't be a function. Now, why did I choose this x value? No reason in particular. I could have chosen any x value over here to show that that happens. So this is not a function. So at least one vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph. So we do not have a function. All right, moving on. What if I just gave you an equation? Can you determine whether or not this represents a function. X again is the input and Y is the output. Well, perhaps you would say, uh, yes, I, it does represent a function because I know that this is a parabola that looks like that, uh, therefore passes the vertical line test. So it is a function. For every X value, there's only one corresponding Y value. So absolutely, it's a function. Now, my question for you would be, did you really need to graph this function to determine that it actually was a function? And the truth is you did not. If we think about what's going on in this equation, imagine substituting any x value you want in for x here. And then what would you do to get the corresponding y value? Well, you just square it. Now, is it possible to put an x value in for x, square it, and get more than one result for y? And the answer is no. No matter what number you substitute in for x and you square it, you only get one result. For example, if I substitute five in for x, 5 squared is 25, and that's it. It's 25. There's no other number. So y has to be 25 when x is 5. And that'll happen for any x value that you substitute in. You'll only get one result for y, which means that it's a function. And that's what this is saying here. We can see from the equation that no matter what value we choose for x, there's only one corresponding value for y. And this is kind of a weird one here. I just put this in for fun. What about y squared equals x? And in this case, x is still our, our input and y is our output. Is this a function? It turns out uh, that it's actually not. And you can see uh, by, by using an example here, if you chose an x value of four, um, what output or what y values could we have? Well, if x is four, y could be two because two squared does give us four, but y could also be negative two because negative two squared is also four. So for a particular X value, um, for example, four, we have two different Y values that are possible, two and negative two. So that means it's not a function because if one X value led to two different corresponding Y values. So that's kind of just an example for fun. Okay, uh, sometimes we use these things called mapping diagrams to display uh, relations or in our case functions and they look like this. We don't see them a lot in this course, but this is what they look like. Here's your input on the left. Here's your output on the right. Notice that any given input value only corresponds to a single output value. Now, all the output values happen to be five here. One goes with five, two goes with five, and three goes with five. But the point is one only goes with five two only goes with five, and three only goes with five, which means that this is a function. What about something like this? Well, I think you'll probably see pretty quickly that if we choose an input value of 10, you can think of this as like the X value, it corresponds to two different output values, three and nine. So because of that, this does not represent a function. What about this one here? That's yeah, bunch of x values or input values here. Notice that each one corresponds only to a single output value, which means that this is indeed a function. Okay, let's move on. Going to quickly review something called function notation. Uh, and it looks like this. Perhaps you've seen this in the past. Uh, it is a way of notating a function. Okay, and when we when we write it this way, uh, what we see on the left side here has very specific meaning. So what is this talking about? First of all, the way we say this is f at x, or sometimes we say f of x. Okay, f is the name of the function, x is the variable or the input uh, that it uses. Then we could say it's the independent variable. Okay, so f is the name of the function x is the variable it uses. So that's why we say f is a function of x. f does something to an x value. And you can see exactly what it does to that x value over here. Multiplies it by 20 and then adds 150. 
Uh, in this case, we say that yes, f is a function of x, and it's important to note this does not mean f times x. Now, I know in earlier courses that you've taken, uh, when you have two letters side by side, especially, you know, if you see this bracket here, it implies a multiplication. That is not what this means here. This is simply stating that we have a function that we're calling f, and it operates or it does something to an input value, which we're calling x. So f at x or f of x. Often we think of functions as being machines. So for example, here's a machine, uh, its name is f. So this is, you know, this is our function. It's called f. What does it do? It takes an input and that input is x. So we take x and we put it into that function machine. That function machine does something to it and then it spits something out. The thing that it spits out is f at x, okay? x after it's gone through the function machine. And that's, as we've seen, uh, what it looks like, f at x. So the input goes in to the f machine. Machine does something, it gives us our output, which is x after it's been affected by the function f. f at x there, okay. Uh, an example, here's a, an example using a very specific function. f at x equals two x plus three. So this machine does something very specific. It takes an input, which is x, and it does something to it. What does it do? Multiplies it by two and adds three. So let's do that, let's pick an input here. We'll use an input value or an x value of five. We're going to put that into the machine and the machine is going to do something to the five. What is it gonna do? It's going to double it and then add three. So the machine does its work. Now we know that if we take five, we double it, we get 10, and then we add three, we get 13. So we're going to spit out our answer from the machine and we see that it is 13, but I'll draw your attention to this too. Notice we wrote f at five is 13, okay? And this here means if we put five into our function, the result or the output is 13, okay? So that's five after it's been operated on, if you wanna put it that way, by our function f. Function f, what does it do to five? It turns it into a 13, okay? Let's do an example here uh, without the cheesy animation, just to show you the way we often do this uh, when we're writing it on paper. So our function, its name is f, it uh, operates or it, uh, it does something to an input that we're calling x. So f at x is three x plus four. So in other words, our function takes an x value, multiplies it by three and adds four. We wanna find f at two, which is really just saying, put two into this function machine. Okay, you're gonna take that two, you're gonna multiply it by three, and then you're gonna add four. And when we write that out, we know that f at x is three x plus four. When we wanna find f at two, notice we switched the x to a two here. You also want to switch that to a two here, right? And we're substituting all the x's with a two. So f at two, is three times two plus four. And then we can, of course, just evaluate this. Three times two is six. Six plus four is 10. So F at two is 10. Okay, and that's the, uh, that's the way we use function notation. Just one last little point here before we wrap things up. Uh, equations and function notation. So any equation that is a function can be written using function notation. And you've seen a lot of functions in the past. For example, uh, here's one using the xy notation, y equals x squared minus four x plus seven, which of course, uh, I think you know, is just a parabola if we graphed it. However, we now have the option of writing this using function notation. So instead of writing y equals x squared minus four x plus seven, we can write f at x equals x squared minus four x plus seven. It's just another way to notate it. Uh, again, when we notate it this way, uh, we're, given our, we're giving our function a name, we're calling it f, and we're being very specific about its input, which is x. Uh, but ultimately, these two things really do kind of look the same, don't they? The only difference is instead of writing y, we're saying we have a function uh, of x, uh, which is called f at x, or the function is called f anyway. And that is it. So that is what, uh, functions are all about and what uh, function notation is all about. I hope you found that helpful. Take care.